How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane, and I'm here to give you another Yashihime episode review and recap. Today's episode is episode 35, Battle on the New Moon, Part 2. So, uh, you know, last time we had the new moon that showed up. And, of course, we've been going with this split three-part plot for the past couple of weeks or so. Um... Before I get into what happened in this episode, I'd like to ask you to please give me a like, comment, and a subscribe. They definitely help out the channel. I know last review I did, I think it was Hawkeye, I forgot to do that, to say, to ask you guys to do that, because that was really a really, really good episode. If you watch Hawkeye, or if you're interested in watching Hawkeye, please watch my review, because this week's episode was really good. Anyway, let's get back to uh, Yashihime. So, we have Moraha with... Uh, Hachiman and Takachio, they are going to finally infiltrate the whole raccoon demon, uh, I guess, stronghold. We're uh, trying to get there before Kunimon is inducted as the leader, which we all know is just a front because uh, Shongen, Mama, Mama Mia, Pizza Pot, whatever his name is, he's going to more or less usurp the whole thing. He's going to consolidate his position, just say, hey, I'm in charge. Uh, and of course, on a new moon, that big eye that was giving them issues doesn't give them issues anymore. Uh, then, as well, because it's the new moon, half demons are now human. So, Satsuna's snoozing. She gave instructions to the other demon slayers just in case something came after her, which, of course, something's coming after her. Something called a uh, Yuki. It's called the Yuki O. Yuki No Don? Or Yuki. So, it had more of a Pokemon name than a Yasha name. And, um,. We also have Toa, who was captured by Lady Zero and using Nana Hoshi to make her hurt. <sighs> Things get convoluted. I have some interesting opinions about this. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. So, uh, we open up with Shishonru is visiting Ren inside the tree. I kind of don't know why the, she's in the tree now if it's not slowing down the scaling from the Silver Scale Curse. But she's in there. She's able to talk to him. She says she wants to see her children one last time. You know, she, she's crying. This, even Jock can point out that the scaling is getting worse. And, you know, Shishomaru turns around to walk away and she tells him that Toa is crying. You know, he listened to it. He stopped. Then he kept walking. We all know what that means. That means Shishomaru is about to, he's about to get down. Uh, Jock and remarks that it is actually the new moon. So... Both of the twins are probably at their lowest right now, which you can all. I even wrote my notes. Daddy Shishomaru's on the way. So now we have the snow beasts, and they're crawling all over this village that the demon slayers are in. And I gotta admit, these things are adorable. I think they're adorable. I don't know if they're so ugly that they're cute, or if they're just cutishly ugly. I think they're adorable. And the little noise they make, they're. It's adorable to me. So, they're moving around. And his name is Yuki Yudon. He says he's looking for Shishonru's kid. He wants to settle the score. I'm just going to tell you right now, before I even forget. They never get into what that even means. What score? Did you did you fight with him before? There was no flashback. There was no hinting. There was no him saying, I'm going to get, get him back. Blah, 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 blah. Just... Just a one-off statement. <clears throat> mean. All right, wait, wait, wait. Oh, and the art looks different, noticeably different. Like it looks like half of this episode was drawn by whoever drew Summer uh, Summer Wars and our uh, our War Games, the Digimon movie. Whoever drew both of those helped pencil in some of this because the art was different for. The Sasuna plot, the art was half of the art was different for the Moraha plot, but the the it and the uh Toa plot, all that looks like the original art. So pay attention to these kind of things. You can tell just from the shading and the coloring, you can it's it's just different. It looks different. <clears throat> Not bad though. Looks good, just it's different. So meanwhile, Nana Hoshi, who I keep forgetting to point out, he has black teeth. I don't know what that's about. Pardon me, I might look into that one day. 
the whole backstory behind what he's supposed to be. But yeah, he's saying that the finest aromatic wood is made in the mini galaxy. He's like, okay, I'm like, oh, okay. And he opens up this little galaxy, and those butterflies are coming at Toa. She's blocking, you know, she's trying to block it, but then she can't move. And there's this giant bug just right here on her. And it's called the Eternity Bug. And apparently it's going to suck out all of her pain and anguish. And this thing is hurting her. She's just like, ah, rah. It's, it's, it's hurting her real bad. <clears throat> so mean, meanwhile, meanwhile, we have a drunk Shogunin. He's coming, coming along to the fortress. He's saying, hey. You know, the eyes closed because the new moon is out. And so the other raccoon, the raccoon guards, two of them are like, we'll, we'll remain vigilant. So <clears throat> at daybreak, they're going to do the coming of age ceremony. And the other two are like, yeah, we know he's going to consolidate his position. Unfortunately, now see, I called this from a mile away. So then another show, shogun comes in pulling Morha along by a string saying, you know, I caught, I captured this one. And they were looking at each other and he's like, did another me just come through here? That Hachiman, he escaped me. You fools, go get him. Go get the guards and everything. And they cause a ruckus. Even more, huh? this should have been a tip off. More, huh? I was like, how could you guys get fooled by a disguise because you're raccoon dogs? Slanted on thick. Because obviously, the real one was the drunk one, who is then tackled by over a dozen guards. When, while Morha and Hachi, <laughs> Hachiman, disguised as Shongen, just walk past. He even does a good job of doing the Shongen voice. That's a really good disguise from him. So I'm glad he didn't mess that up. But I caught him my way. I even wrote my notes. I said a fake one. Obviously fake, right? Um, so she goes into that room that she was in before when they had, where they had, uh, not they captured her, when she had fall, fallen through and saw all the plans they're making. The painting was over there in the corner with the raccoon dog. That's where her bow and arrow was. And, um, Kinisuke, which is Takachi's brother, he comes in and asks about his brother, you know, he asks about him, you know, he says, who's there? Oh, it's you. Uh, he blames himself for everything happening because of his lack of courage, saying his brother must hate him. And Moraha says, well, your brother's dealing with things in his own way, which means he's taking care of the situation, but he doesn't seem to hold any grudge against you. Uh, he wishes he could see his brother and wants to apologize, and Moraha, in her mind, is thinking... He's way more mature than Takachiyo. Yes, he is. I wish this is the character we would have gotten instead of Takachiyo, but I digress. And suddenly, from the painting, the full moon raccoon demon speaks, you know, uh, and Moraha shoots an arrow, but it doesn't hit it. It just bounces off and says, with that weak, pathetic power, I am almost said power, but spiritual power, you think you can beat me. And, um... He, as he says, it says to Kinesuke, uh, Kinesuke, Kinesuke, yeah, Kinesuke, you know, says, you know, capture her immediately, and funniest thing happens, all that, what, uh, a light comes from the painting, which freezes her, so it reminds me of the light that came from the giant eyeball, Takamaru, Takachiyo's loyal retainer, just the hawk, thumbs up for the hawk, Comes in, knocks the painting over, and drops the, the scrolls that uh, Moraha needed on learning how to, you know, stop the world reversal technique. Oof, that's that's that. And then for some reason, the painting says, Ki, you know, Kinesuke, you know, help me up here. And he's like, well, why would I listen to you? Smart. So Moraha's trying to read it, and... <laughs> the preface is too long that she's just like, why? Because it says, you know, Lady Moraha, you know, daughter of Inuyasha and Lady Kagome. I hope you're well. Moroku's doing a lot of talking. I believe it's from Moroku. And the painting is actually of Moroku showing how to do the technique. But she couldn't get a chance to finish it because here comes Shongen in with two guards. And she's like, it's I love Moraha in this episode because she's teasing like, is it really you or is this Hachiman? Because who knows? And he, dude is yelling like, no, it's actually me. And don't you fools do that again. So, uh, here we are, here we are. You know, he wants uh, Kinesuke to come towards him. And she's like, nah. I, she picks him up, as you see right here. And 
they run, they run off jumping through the window, and you see the red kite that she had been traveling on before. Uh, Shogun then tells all of them and all the guards, hey, you guys go ahead and go get them. Uh, we got to follow that red kite. But it's actually Takamaru pulling the kite along. Uh, Taka, not Takachiyo, uh, Moraha and Kanisuke are actually still on the roof, and she tells them to be quiet as everyone runs by. Because she openly says to Shongen, I cannot fight you yet because I haven't finished reading this. So, ha Back over to the snowy village, the snow beast is searching for Satsuna. Uh, they eventually get to the, the end where the uh, Yuki Nodon is saying, you know, her demon energy is kind of weak. Ha 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 ha. And he is so tall that he breaks the top of the opening of the inn where Kohaku and, um, What's his name? Kohaku and Hisui are just waiting, and Hisui's reading instructions from Setsuna, which I have more about that in a minute. Um, says, so if the demon is taller than six Shaku, and I'm like, okay guys, I get that you're immersing us in this feudal world. What? Why has there never been like a key that's gone like six Shaku equals, I know they do centimeters in Japan, so six Shaku equals a uh, hundred and eighty centimeters, six feet, seven feet. I'm like, so I'm doing my own guesstimate, and I'm gonna say six shaku, six feet. That's what I'm for now on. That's so in your mind, imagine six shaku equals six feet. Uh, Kohaku openly says, "Yeah, that guy's at least seven shaku." So all right, so it says pull rope one. There's literally two ropes: rope one, rope, rope two. They pull rope one. Well, he sweet pulls rope one because uh. The Yuki Nodon is just like, so you guys are, who are you guys? We're Demon Slayers. So they hired you. Not exactly. Obviously, they're there to rest up and protect their uh, comrade. She can't really fight right now. Hisui pulls that lever. And, um, Hisui pulls that lever and spears come shooting down. Just, But Yuki Nodon is able to easily dodge it. Obviously, they were prepared for that to be dodged because... There is a revolving wall that sends him to the outside where Kohaku calls to the other two Demon Slayer guys that are always with them and they catapult this guy out of the village. Now, the um, the little guys, the little the little snow guys, the little cutie pies, they come in and Kohaku's like, what does it say about something that's at least one Shaku? And apparently, uh, what's her name? Satsuna wrote that he should just use his sickle. And he's like, I really didn't even need to ask for that. And so he uses a sickle. He's able to cut all these things up rather easily. It's like, if it's at least less than 10 of them, that's what he should do. And he was able to do it. But then several of them merge together and they make five wolf looking things. And there's even instructions for that. Because <laughs> they say if they merge into something that's five shaku. Then he he's supposed to uh he's supposed to use the the big boomerang the hirat the hirat's koku thing or whatever, and we in between reading the things we do I don't I don't remember hearing her voice but it might have been her voice talking over it but we do see her writing and everything and for this one she's re she's smelling the hand cream I don't know what the hell it is now about this lavender hand cream that's supposed to be amazing. I know Lavender has some type of medicinal purposes, real life and in folklore, which is supposed to think, I think supposed to get rid of demons or something like that. I'm, I am not 100% sure at this very moment. I know I knew it before, but I need to know what the deal with this damn hand cream is. Anyway, <clears throat> he does the, the boomerang thing. It cuts a lot of their heads off, cuts a lot of them in half. Yuki Odon runs back into town out of breath. Great voice acting forever did that creature, by the way, because I can tell that they were having a hard time breathing. And he's like, don't mess with me. Kohaku's sitting on uh, sitting on a couple of these things, dead bodies that they already beat. And he's, he's like, all right, rope two. Bamboo spears come down. He's like, you're not going to get me. Come on, you're not going to get me. But this time he steps onto a, I guess, a loaded plank that launches him through the roof breaks part of the end so we can see Setsuna sleeping just right over yonder sends him out of town and he's hilariously saying please stop sending me flying 
uh, I, I'm just going to insert this here about these instructions. Was this instructions because Satsuno felt bad that they had to protect her? So she was like, well, I'll just tell them what to do so they don't have to worry about it. Was that the thing? Because even Kohaku said what I was thinking. Dude's been doing this for a long time. Why would he need someone to tell him what to do? Unless he's just placating her because she felt bad about them having to protect her. Maybe that's it. I'm hoping that's it. Um, we go back into the issue with Toa. Zero is taunting Toa, saying if she cries, it'll alleviate some of her sorrow. And I was thinking to myself, I even wrote this in my notes. I don't know why it is I like a character like Dio. Or what's the difference between Zero and uh, Naraku? Where Naraku's whole thing... At first, you think it's jealousy, but it's not. Well, I haven't finished the uh, final chapter, so I'm assuming his whole thing still wasn't about jealousy. It's just he he uh, longed for this priestess. He was a, already a horrible guy that longed for a priestess, but was just generally wicked in his soul, even though he yearned for her. And his wickedness took him over, and so he became this annoyingly powerful guy along the way that kept getting stronger and stronger, or always had a way of warding the heroes you know wind tunnel he had the bugs when they thought they killed him no nah, it's not really me it's it's a shikigami here's a female version of me here's a kid version of me here's a female version of me that's a little kid that can't speak that uses a mirror to trap all of you xyz i'm gonna take over your brother's dead body i'm gonna what for kagura he had her soul or whatever do a lot of underhanded stuff which made him annoying which made me really yearn to see him lose i'm learning to see zero lose because her whole deal is like just weird jealousy like weird jealousy or super racism right because she hates humans to the point that she hates half demons but then if if these are the grandkids and yinyasha was was the kid of the guy who was you were so close to he was so close to your brother he was such a strong opponent such a great friend and you f somehow fell in love with him he was like oh well except that he's with um lady i can't remember shishomaru's mom's name i don't think they ever give her name but with you know lady that's over the realm of the dead i can deal with that how is his ex-wife able to be like yeah i don't really hate or care about humans that much how is she cool with it, even though he got with another woman that was human? But you're super salty. Her whole thing, her her whole thing is just being salty. And then I was thinking about Dio from uh, what's the show called, guy? Okay? JoJo's a Bizarre Adventure. I like Dio because Dio's just he's strong and he's an ass, right? His whole deal was he had an abusive father, and when he was shown kindness, he was still evil. So he was showing that there's always evil in people. So each three, all three of these villains I've described, each have a similarity about them, but each have different, like a different motivation. I don't know. I'm just, I'm looking forward to when someone stabs Zero. I'm just, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm pretty sure she's trying to get that, get Toa to kill her just to kill their mom. Bitch level. Anyway, Toa's saying she's never going to cry. And even Nanahoshi's, he's all weirdly giddy about what's going on you know she refuses to cry because that's what they want her to do right and our return screen is actually kohaku teaching a young hisui how that boomerang thing works it's very nice this family right there in the background watching him teach him it's very nice so when we get back uh kinusuke is asking you know what about the raccoon demon because she's trying to talk about everything she's like it probably wasn't a raccoon demon talking uh it's probably uh shongen throwing his voice because he's really worried you know it, what about your spirit power not working the dude is really threatened by her having her spirit abilities so off the bat she's like yeah i know he's worried about it so we're gonna keep pressing on because i know that was him throwing his voice and it was probably him who was able to freeze us in place and deflect the arrow uh they end up making their way down um Oh, he tried to bluff them, so with a crazy bluff, and she's like, so we're going to take his bluff. And while they're going to make their way down a long, rocky corridor, uh, Hachiman and Takeshio 
are talking to the other raccoon uh raccoon demons saying dude has been embezzling from your taxes for a long time they even have they even have proof of it which is amazing so they're saying hey let's just overthrow him and everybody's on board uh Kinesuke is envies his brother because he has somebody like her as wonderful as her as an ally and um the clan is in decline because of his behavior she says look you're having a hard time too just try to get along with your brother right they get downstairs and there's this massive full moon down there just straight up a full moon and um <laughs> what is it here i hope she's small nope, nope oh i was making note that since Kinusuke. In this case, it's tiny. He's kind of just hopping down the steps. Um, where am I at here? So, Kinusuke was was told that the full moon raccoon demon was their clan's guardian spirit. And um, she's like, oh, come on. If someone like Shogun is using it for bad things, how good is it? She's saying she'll be their guardian, right? And she notches his arrow back. I love the sound effect on when the string is being pulled taut. And she's like, I'm not like my mother. This is an arrow ceiling. This is going to purify him. And that giant orb is spitting sand, demon sand and everything at them. She lets it fly. Breaks into it. I love this visual of this giant, just this moon in front of them. Cracking. Dulling, then getting light again. Then just exploding. Fantastic. Fantastico. Um, so... This is making the air around them break and crumble. Stairs crumble. Uh, Kunisuke falls. Or more how reaches for him. She falls. But then here comes Takachio with Hachiman on his back. He gets his brother. Hachiman grabs Moraha before she falls. And she says, you know, I got you, Lady Moraha. Are you sure it's you? Because this would be a really bad situation if it was Shongen. And he's like, you're very funny. Which it was actually a very funny moment. Um, and again, the art is different. I noticed the art change at this very moment because they all land outside. Shogun comes up. He's like, you took everything from me. He's like, yeah, you want to settle this now? You know what? Yeah, I'm down for some revenge. For Inuyasha put this scar on my face, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat up his daughter in return. So Moraha tells Takachiyo to hold the papers for her for her to read how to beat this guy. And <laughs> she's like, why me? Look. If you don't stand your ground, who's going to protect your clan, right? This is your clan. And he's like, you know what? Cool. I'm going to do it. And she's like, I know I can depend on you. And, he's, and he reaffirms it. You can definitely depend on me to do this. Because she says, you're the only one I can ask to do this. So he's taking his position, holding the paper. She does the Crimson Demon Wave. Dude summons the White Women of the Mist to seduce the dragon. All they do is just... You know, the four white figures appear, but they just turn it back around. Since now he can't use the full raccoon demon thing. She turns it back using the Crimson Backlash Wave. I still hate that name. And it goes back to him. Now, she purposely countered with the slowest speed. She purposely did all that slowly so she could read the text. And dude does the world reversal technique. And she's trying to flip her hands. She's like, how does this work again? And... I love the visual for the world reversal that is just literally inverted. It's upside down. <laughs> and Hachiman and Kinesuke are super worried. And she goes, all right, Takashiyo, we'll say it together. And they do, they say world, war, you know, world reversal. Boom. And everything flips normal. So when a dragon comes to them, it just goes right back around. Now here's the part that was kind of, kind of threw me off here. Shogun says, that's the same technique that um that's the same technique that the monk did and i'm thinking to myself that's your technique though you literally just did the technique everybody's just doing the same technique what do you what what whatever so of course it hits him he goes flying i guess he's gone forever he's not technically dead but he's gone forever and um <clears throat> where am i at here uh, they go back inside. The painting is now smiling, and Moraha's kind of confused. She thought it was, you know, that the guardian thing was gone, or that the whole thing, the painting was a fake. And actually, Hachiman says, actually, by you purifying it and it being broken free of the spell of Shongen, it, it appears it's back to being their guardian spirit. 
And now we get to the part where I am uh, kind of miffed. So I am miffed because <sighs> Morhot says to Takashi, all right, so, you know, good luck running the clan and everything. He goes, nah, I don't want to run a clan. That's not what I came here for. And everyone's kind of surprised. He's saying that he has way too much fun working for the corpse dealer, doing all the bounties and stuff. On top of that, you know, this this little old castle can't hold me. I'm like, okay, I, I feel you. I, I get you. I get you, bro. But, okay, so here's the part we're going to next. Uh, he says he's leaving the clan to his brother. And it's cool. And, he's, and Moraha's like, yeah, good job. That's awesome, and blah, blah, blah. He's like, why is Moraha acting like the boss? And he, he's like, oh, by the way, here's here's the one real, but here's gold dust. This gold dust will help you pay your debt. And she's like, nah, I don't want it either. I don't want this. I enjoy doing the whole bounty hunting thing. And I'm thinking to myself, wait. Sorry about that. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. I'm 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 thoroughly, thoroughly confused here. Um wasn't that the whole point of her doing this? Like, like I get that you enjoy bounty hunting, but why couldn't you just pay your debt, not be indebted to that asshole anymore, and still do your whole thing? That's what would make sense to me. I, is this a whole? I, I don't like it when we're trying to keep status quo at the, at, you know, to the point of things not making sense. This part in particular does not make sense to me. That this it just doesn't. This particular part does not make much sense to me. Okay, but anyhow, anyway, she gives him back, gives uh Takachiyo back the money. Takachiyo then in turn says, "I cannot accept money that I've already given away." I think it's a raccoon dog thing. It's I I really do think that's in their lore that once they give it out, they can't take it back. So he gives it to his brother and tells his brother. Pay it back to your people who were robbed. And of course, Morha's like, well, that's uh, that won't pay all of it. That's just a little bit, but there you go. Um, so Hachiman, Kanisuke, and the other raccoon dogs, they bow and they thank Moraha and Takashio as they go flying off. And you know, they're they're not, you know, Moraha's not used to it. She's kind of embarrassed. She's not blessing, she's kind of embarrassing, but you know, she just waves at everybody and they're on their way. <sighs> it's now the next morning. Satsuna wakes up, sees a hole in the wall. We see the clothes of what was Yuki Nodon, because even Kalaku was like, this was Yuki Nodon. She, you know, her hair is still kind of long, but it looks like it's shortening up, and she says, I hope it didn't cause you much trouble. She's like, they're like, nah, it's fine. By the way, guys, we're going to be on our way. Satsuna can guard us the whole way through. Everybody's all happy, except for her. She's just like, yeah, I'll definitely do it. You can count on me. Um... To Toa is still being tortured into the morning. That means she's been tortured for several hours, probably six to eight hours she's been tortured. And there's tears welling up in her eyes, but she review she refuses to cry. She says over and over, I will never forgive you. I will never forgive any of you. Her hair is white now, so I don't know why she just doesn't absorb whatever pain is coming into her into a blade or something. So they're trying to turn her evil because the both of these jackasses are, are laughing, especially dumbass Lady Zero. And the next episode, which is called, I actually don't know if I, I did not get the, the next episode title. But next episode, she is about, we get Toa's experience. It's about, you know, she says a bunch of words. Eternity, Bug, Missing Sister, Silver Pearl, Lavender Hand Cream. What the fuck to do with this hand cream? Um... They show her, you know, mi you know, being in the modern world, I guess, being picked on, but then being there for the birth of her adoptive sister and everything else. And she's like, Toa means eternity. What does my name mean? Why was I given this name? You know, Zero's motive was one of the things she also said. <sighs> and Mini Galaxy was another thing she said. So we get flashes of Kohaku with Shishomaru. I guess they got to fight demons to get to Toa. Papa Shishomaru is on the way. Looks like Toa finally gets a, you know, bad demon form. So she's going to have to get some type of form of sealing or some crap. It's obvious that Zero wants her to kill her to kill her mother, I think. I, probably, you know, she wouldn't mind it. But I still want to know what to do with this hand cream. Um, 
Let me see how much time I got left. I don't have that much time left, but allow me to say this. So what I usually do scoring, it's not like uh, it's not like scoring in school, right? Where you're, you start off at zero and you gather your points up. I usually start, you start at a five and then things just get knocked down. Instantly you get knocked down, things are just regular, nothing out of the ordinary happens. But the thing is, I like the art for this. I like how well blended it seems that two art styles were. I, I'm still on board for having three separate plots because these this was actually stretched out to four episodes where it could have been easy. Start up episode, the Toa, the uh, Moral High episode, Sasuna episode, and then this, where it they did a good job of spanning across two two ish days. Yeah, two days. Because this is how the setup on how Toa's in the situation. So I give you credit for that. I don't understand why Morha needs to still be indebted to work there. Maybe it's because she's, you know, young and doesn't understand this shit. I don't get it. That part's kind of dumb to me. Um, still don't understand why Kohaku needed instructions when Kohaku has been doing demon hunting, demon slaying, longer than any of our main cast have been alive. So, yeah. For that, I'm giving this a four. I think it's a four because they we did some good wrap-up with a small underplot. This plot here, I'm interested in seeing what Shoshomaru is going to do to bring his girl back to the good side. Bring his little baby girl Toa back to the good side. And not all enraged. Probably be Sasuna hugging her and biting. Because I can easily see if they would have did the 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 simple here's a here's everyone's different episode thing, then it, it would I would have been kind of annoyed by oh they all just happen to get there at the right moment. No, you can see everyone was doing stuff, and then they may or may not get there at the right moment. So four to five for me, please. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And if you're not new here, hit the notification button so you get notified of more videos like this. Also, share the video so others can see what a great time we're having, and they can join in in the discussion. As always, thank you for taking some time out to spend some time with me. Please, be good, be blessed. Wash your hands, wear a mask. Be good to yourself, be good to others. Either way it goes, don't be a jerk. You're never alone, and I will definitely... See you next time.